Thank you.
have to stand up strong Face the truth about themselves To understand what went wrong I know we can find a way I know we can find a way I know we can find a way To stand up Stand up Stand up Uniting the races with truth Instead of dividing them with lies, we're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for being with me. I do appreciate it. You can get involved by calling 888-7753-773-888. Seven seven, Jesse, J E S S E, Jesse, and the lines are filling up right now. So I know I get I get calls in my office from people who say I I, I try to get through I can't. Well, it's because the lines are full. You have to jump in as soon as you can. All right. So there is a couple of lines, there are excuse me there are a couple of lines open. That if you want to jump in now. Um, My biblical question, brand new one for this week. Do you have morals and values? If so, where did you find them? Do you have morals and values? You don't have it? Okay. I have to come back to that phone. They don't have that ready. Uh, we have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're busy and you just don't have time to sit and watch the show live for now, of course you can podcast any time of day or night. But you could be listening while you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. By calling the listen line on Talk Screen Live. By calling the listen line on Talk Screen Live at 641 793 1500. 641 793 1500. And follow us on social media. Social media, JLP Talk on X, JLP Talk on X, and Cozy dot TV slash JLP. Cozy dot TV slash JLP. Cozy dot TV slash JLP. And my brand new biblical question. Oh, let me get to that in a minute. Uh, to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash Jesse Lee, JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Or Rebuilding the Man, where it is tax deductible on rebuildingtheman.com. And uh, on the social media, don't forget to like, follow, ring the bell, subscribe, and all that. My brand new biblical question. Do you have morals and values? If so, where did you find them? Do you have morals and values? If so, where did you find them? Amazing, huh? My blow, huh? Interesting, huh? And again, these questions are put there. For those who are seeking and try to overcome the hell that they're in. And you can't overcome the hell if you want. It's up to you. Or you can love your hell and stay in there. That's up to you as well. Isn't that amazing? Yes, Jesse. That is amazing. It is starting to, the daylight is longer now in L.A. It might not be that way anywhere else. (laughs) 
But in LA, seven o'clock, seven thirty, it's still light outside. I love it. I like the daylight. I'm not into the darkness. I never have been, to be honest. But it's just nice to have light. And then the weather is becoming California weather again, even though it's kind of big California weather. You get a little chilly, a little cold. To Californians, 50-something degrees is freezing. So it's really, uh, as far as weather concerned, the climate is concerned in California. It's amazing. And I want to thank the white people for that. Because everyone know that white people are superior. White supremacy, they say. And they blame the white people for everything that's good. And so white people thank you since you are known by the people of color to be superior to the point they live and dream of calling you white supremacy. And they blame you for everything that's good. They blame you for the climate. They're like, white people want good climate. We wanted to mess it up. So thank you, white people, for the amazing climate in L.A. I wonder why God gave white people the power to control everything. It's interesting, though, to me. I pay attention to a lot of stuff. It's interesting in that there are some white people, some, I don't know how many, it seems like they're most of millennials, too. There are some white people who believe that the Jews have the power. There are some white people but believe that the Jews have the power. But nearly all, and not all, not all, not all, not all, but most, nearly all people, quote unquote, color, since everybody's been dashed into the same box if you're not white, nearly all people of color believe white people have the control. Which is it? Which, which group really have the, the power? I'm wondering, but white people, thank you for making the weather really nice. I do appreciate it. So yesterday, I believe, let me just read this. Texas Tribune, a federal appeal court, court late Tuesday night stopped a state law allowing Texas police to arrest people suspected of illegal crossing the Texas-Mexico borders. Hours after the U.S. Supreme Court, I thought that's where it went, had allowed it to go into effect. Amazing. And so I thought that that's where it went. So the U.S. Supreme Court said, yes, Texas can uphold the law and stop these illegal, arrest them, send them back wherever they came from, back across the border. And overnight, according to the Texas Tribune, a federal appeals court said no. So right away I wondered, why would a court, any court, U.S. Supreme Court, Federal Appeal Court, lower courts, whatever they may be. Why would they disagree with stopping illegal aliens from entering into our country? Why would the court not put America first? Don't you wonder that? That doesn't even make sense to me. The U- I thought the U.S. Supreme Court ruled over everybody, all the other courts. But so why, why wouldn't any court in America look out for the American citizens? So overnight, according to the Texas Tribune, 
a federal appeal court late Tuesday night stopped a state law allowing Texas police to arrest people suspected of illegal, illegally crossing the Texas-Mexico border hours after the U.S. Supreme Court had allowed it to go into effect. So which will the Texas lawmakers obey, the U.S. Supreme Court or the appeals court, federal appeal? That's interesting to me. I'm going to have to ask Hank about that since he's supposed to. I think he actually graduated from college. Amazing, huh? What a mess. They don't want you to have a wall around your borders, our borders, and my country. But they're okay with sending Ukraine and other countries money to put up a wall around their borders. It reminds me of a husband or a wife who leave their own family and go and take on somebody else's family and feel good about it while your kids suffer. It reminds me of that. Amazing. And, and you know how they've been sending, and they're fighting to send our money to Ukraine. The Democrats and some right old Republicans are fighting against the Republicans who say, no, we can't send any more money over there. They're fighting over it. They want to send the money, but not down to our borders. And you vote for them. You continue to vote for them. Who is the fool, the voter or the representative of the voters? When you vote like that, what do you have to complain about? And we've been sending truckloads of money. As a matter of fact, the little so-called president against, uh, over Ukraine, whatever his name is, is, um, what's his Ukraine president? Galeski. He come over here and, and demand he wants some more money. And then go like, oh, okay, how much? <laughs> a board for his wall, but not for our wall. According to KYIV, independent.com, President Galinsky announced on March 11, following a meeting with military commander and ministers, that Ukraine is building a 2,000 kilometer of fortifying defense line. Why is it for Rodos? Rodos. Near the Ukrainian city of Kupiansk, white concrete barricades and coils of razor wire stretch for more than a mile. Trenches with basic living quarters are being dug here under cover of darkness. Artillery rumbles can be heard nearby. These are the country's new northeastern defensive lines. A Reuters visit on December 28th showed how the country has stepped up construction of its fortification in recent months. It's part of a shift in military operations against Russia to a more defensive footing. The goal? To help Ukraine weather assault while regenerating its forces as Moscow takes the battlefield initiative, according to military analysts. Zelensky said Ukraine's defensive constructions needed to be boosted and accelerated in regions stretching all the way up from Ukraine's east, along the border with Russia and Belarus, to its western ally, Poland. Amazing. So while they are building a wall in Ukraine with our money, a federal appeals court said no to Texas enforcing their law to protect themselves in the United States of America. And the borders right now, and it's been that way for the last four years, is a mess. But it's going to get worse. Sorry to tell you people this who have fear, especially. It's going to get worse. War unto America. And you know why? It's because illegals are coming across the world into our country. And guess what? To add fuel to the fire, quote-unquote, they're now coming in from Haiti. 
down over yonder by Florida. They're coming on boats and planes. Well, I don't know about planes. But they're coming on boats from Haiti. And just think about this. In uh, El Salvador and all the places where all the gang members and dealers in Mexico, where all these people are coming from, the inmates that they don't want over there. And right now, Haiti is in a, was seen to have been that way forever. Haiti is uh, in a mess. They're coming here now. The governor of Florida is working overtime to try to stop it down in Florida, but they're coming. And you think that the blacks, no, 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 but most, you think that the blacks in, a, in America already uh, bring on crime and drugs and violence and carjacking and home invasion, uh, home robberies and killing one another and killing white people and all that. You think that's bad right now? And it is. Just think what's going to happen when the blast from Haiti get here. They let the inmates, or they broke out of prisons over there in Haiti. And now, according to reports, I don't know, but according to reports, Haiti is being controlled by hot dog or chicken dog or somebody. A barbecue, I think. Yeah, barbecue. Call him Mama Cook Barbecue while you were little. Chickens. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? White people, you thought you were afraid of the blacks? Just wait until the Haitians get here. White people, you thought you were afraid of the blacks, and you are. Just wait until the Haitians get here. And they black. And that country has been a hellhole, asshole country for years now. You know, the great white hope said that with the borders being open, that you have people coming from asshole countries. And they are. And they're bringing their asshole values and ideas. And they do not fit with white people values. So the wall going up in Ukraine, or the wall going up, but not in America, at least not now. Elon Musk retweeted this video out about the border crisis in America. Watch this from X. Flood the country with untold millions of illegals by land, sea, and air from all over the world. Two, prioritize the needs of these millions of non-citizens over the needs of the American citizen. With free flights, buses, hotels, meals, and phones, ensuring their loyalty to the political party that imported them. Three, keep them in the country at all costs, even when they commit violent crime like murder and rape. Attack the language used to describe the criminals, as opposed to the criminals themselves. Slander critics as racist. Four. Ensure their privileges are made irrevocable with city and state sanctuary laws that act as population magnets. 5. Count the non-citizens in the census that will determine congressional apportionment in the House of Representatives. A tremendous amount of electoral power. 6. Wage a massive, heavily funded lawfare campaign to change state voting laws that legalize mass mail-in ballots. 7. Lock in the permanent voting majority with campaign promises of lavish benefits and permanent privileges. 8. Win elections. Nine, entrenched single-party rule has been achieved. Amazing. If that doesn't make you tremble in your boots, shake in your boots, I don't know what will. And you keep voting for them. And you keep voting for them. It's amazing to me, and I understand it now. I didn't understand it a while back, years ago. I never imagined that American citizens 
whether in government or not, will work at destroying freedom in America. I just, their whole heart, because they're evil, is set on destroying everything that's good about America. I, I, I used to think that every human being in America loved the freedom. The First and Second Amendment, the freedom to move about and to just do what you want. I didn't know that wickedness can operate through people who, and every human being that has anger want power, right? That they would do this to America. And just, oh, I'm not allowed to replay that, right? Hassan? It can replay? Okay. I want, in case you missed it because you just didn't really realize what was coming up, I want you to hear the, the breakdown of America that's been done mostly by Democrats. There are right old Republicans involved, too. And so what you're about to see What you're about to see are steps by steps what really going on. Because I don't think a, a lot of people would up understand this. Some of them, I hear like a fan or a loud noise in my headset. I hope it's it been pitched up. You hear her, son? You don't hear? It stopped all of a sudden. Okay. I, I want you to pay attention just for a moment, especially for you Democrats who are voting for these people. I want you to look at the people who are involved step by step in breaking down America, destroying America. And it's dangerous. And they're doing it not out of love for illegals or anyone, but out of ego need for themselves, money and perceived power. That's all it's about. They don't care about you. And, you, and they can lie to you and you vote for them. So I want you to watch this one more time. Just pay attention. It's short. The breakdown of America by the Democrats. And some... Right on Republicans, too. So this is from uh, where Elon Musk retweeted this video about the border crisis in America. And I want you to watch it. Just kind of look at it with an open mind. Watch this from X. Flood the country with untold millions of illegals by land, sea, and air from all over the world. Two, prioritize the needs of these millions of non-citizens over the needs of the American citizen, with free flights, buses, hotels, meals, and phones, ensuring their loyalty to the political party that imported them. Three, keep them in the country at all costs, even when they commit violent crime like murder and rape. Attack the language used to describe the criminals, as opposed to the criminals themselves. Slander critics as racist. Four, ensure their privileges are made irrevocable with city and state sanctuary laws that act as population magnets. Five, count the non-citizens in the census that will determine congressional apportionment in the House of Representatives, a tremendous amount of electoral power. Six, wage a massive, heavily funded lawfare campaign to change state voting laws that legalize mass mail-in ballots. Seven, lock in the permanent voting majority with campaign promises of lavish benefits and permanent privileges. Eight, win elections. Nine, entrenched single-party rule has been achieved. Amazing. That's evil. Pure evil. And on top of that, according to the Daily Mail, the illegal aliens over here are getting guns. But they don't want you as an American citizen... They don't want you to have the right to bear arms. They don't want the police around to help you. But they want the illegal aliens. According to the Daily Mail, 
A liberal Illinois federal judge has ruled that an illegal immigrant was wrongly banned from possessing a firearm. Judge Sharon Johnson Coleman, she black, what else? She black, an Obama appointee, ruled that an illegal Ill- migrant, an illegal migrant had his Second Amendment right violate, rights violated when he was charged for possession of a weapon. Watch this from uh, News Nations. A judge in Illinois just ruled illegal immigrants have the right to keep and bear arms. Police arrested an illegal immigrant living in Chicago with a gun back in 2020. They charged him for violating the federal law banning illegal immigrants from having guns. Been on the books for a long time. In her decision, she wrote that Umberto Flores received and used the handgun solely for self-protection and protection of property during a time of documented civil unrest in the spring of 2020, the summer of love. Court documents show Flores fired the gun at moving cars during the BLM riots in Chicago. He argues police officers warned him about looters who were approaching his neighborhood. Key to this ruling is that the judge says Flores' conduct, conduct heavily impacted her decision. He had no criminal record and was not considered a risk to public safety. Do you still want you still want these liberal black women running your country? You still want them running your country, your schools or anything, your businesses. She's okay with illegal aliens having the right in our country to bear arms, but not the citizen. And according to the Daily Mail, several other illegal migrants have been arrested in recent week for cr- weeks for crimes, including the sexual assault of an under underage individual. And you keep voting for them. What's wrong with you? Why is this from X? So they're bringing them in. You wonder where the money coming from? They taking it. The COVID fund that was here. Yep. That money. Yep. You talking about the, all the all the pro housing programs. So when people pay rent, all the rental programs, that money. All the programs that we have in the city of Chicago, mm-hmm. they are bankrupting us. They are taking from all of these programs that we have, mm-hmm. and they're taking the money, and they're funding the migrants. Yeah. Our taxpayers, we've already paid $32 million out of our taxes to house and take care of the migrants. Send them home. Send them back. But Venezuela already said, oh, we're not taking them back. So now... Who did you vote for? <laughs> First of all, <laughs> wait, 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 okay. I did vote for Biden because uh, I was not dang. voting. Okay. I did. This this uh, migrant influx that we're dealing with right mm-hmm. now, this is your fault. Uh-oh. Okay, well, let me say, hold on, hold on. Nice. First of all, it is... First of all, nothing. First of all, nothing. You voted for him. And you think the situation in Venice with the Haiti, with the Black Sea are all, uh, is uh, bad, and it is. Wait until the Haiti get here. They're coming. Oh, they are. I can hear them now in that water. They can't swim, but they can take a boat. Because black can't swim. Black cannot swim. And this woman mad because they take her program money. (laughs) If they wouldn't take her program money, I wonder if she still would be angry about the illegal aliens coming. They take her money. What's her her money coming from our tax dollars? 888-7753-773. Back in a moment. Now, I totally disagree with the way things are going, but you can't be angry. 
because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to control you. They do things to make you mad so they can control you. It's like being married. And the wife would do things to make you mad or she would do things to make you feel good. And men do that to women too when they want something from the woman, especially sex. They'll make her feel good or they'll make her angry. And the woman's gonna have to say, you don't wanna be angry. You wanna speak up, you wanna disagree with what's going on, it's wrong, but do not be angry. Then you won't have fear, you won't have doubt, you won't have worries, you'll be able to see. But you gotta stay away from anger. That's why you must forgive your mothers and your fathers so that you can overcome the spirit of anger. It's a spirit and it's wicked. Nothing good in anger because it has no love. You need love to defeat evil. And love is not a weakness. It's a strength. It's from God. It's his nature. Worse. 888-775-3773. There's one line open. And I'm gonna to get to your calls in a minute. I want to just play two quick sound bites. And just so you know, because a lot of people, oh, that ain't happening. It's not really happening. It's happening. My generation don't recognize America anymore. It doesn't look the same at all anymore. It's amazing to me how the blacks voted for the fallen Messiah, Barack Obama, Big Mama Michelle, and they got nothing but hell in the country. That's all they brought. They brought nothing good, and I knew it would be that way. It took a black to bring America to her knees. And when I see all the illegals coming across the border, it reminds me of a couple of years ago, give or take, we used to report on how that was happening in, in uh, European countries, white countries. And we would see the Muslims and everybody just flooding the borders over there. And the so-called president, even though they may be called something there, but it means president, we're allowing it to happen. And then after a while, we start to hear about white women in those countries getting raped by the Muslim people. And I never imagined that that could happen here. It just didn't seem like it could. And it is. Will you guys turn on the evening news tonight and you look and you see the Haitian people coming across on boats. And there are people helping them to get here all for the money. I would just tremble. I would recommend you do. Because it's, you have, look what happened in, in, in Mami Africa, South Africa. The whites over there are trembling every day. They gave this this townships over to the blacks because white people over there felt guilty and fear and all that. And they moved up to the land, the farmland. The blacks are going out there now. And you're letting these people in your country. While pretending that it's about racism. And the blacks are only getting worse. Not all, not all, not all, not all, but most. Watch this from X. Mm -hmm. Don't break them up now. Let them fight. Let them fight. Don't mess. Everyone got a pistol. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a... Mm -hmm. 
and misses. Hey, Shana, Do Shana, man. He killed me. Amazing. So there was a, what sounded like a black woman sitting on her porch, and she watching these black people fight. He's like, oh, let them fight. Let them fight. Yeah, uh-huh. They got a gun. <laughs> Just relax. It reminded me of when I first moved to L.A. I lived in South Central L.A. for a while. And um, I used to see the black kids coming home from school like that. Horseman and other different, Crenshaw High School and places like that, Man, you're right. And they would be fighting on the way home just like that. Crowds of them were fighting one another. All the way home. Isn't that amazing? So, Hassan, I'm, I'm going to want to play that one more time. And I want to remind you, hear this woman, what seemed like a black woman sitting on the front porch, watching this go on. It's like sitting by the dock of the bay. And she's like, let them fight. Uh-huh, they fight. Let them fight. And somebody got a gun. And they black. Watch this from X. Mm-hmm. Don't break them up now. Let them fight. <laughs> Let them fight. Don't mess. You got a pistol. Everyone got a pistol. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm a shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they miss it. Hey, Shana, man. Do Shana, man. He killed me. Black excellence. That's what you call black excellence. And I'm telling you now because the other people are going to tell you, that, oh, that's racism. That's slavery. That's because of that. They're lying to you. That's because of what happened in the home. No love. No love. Only hate. When I was growing up, that it wasn't even thought about. And I grew up under the so-called Jim Crow law. That, that kind of stuff wasn't even thought of. The parents would have never allowed that to happen, even though they were not around when the kids were walking home from school. The kids knew, uh uh-uh, daddy and mama ain't going to allow me. I ain't getting involved with this mess. I'm out of here. And now they're fighting in schools and everywhere. Black excellence is just everywhere. Did you hear that up in Oregon, I think, or Washington State, one of those? I'm not sure which one. If you want to be a lawyer, you don't have to take the bar anymore. I know someone that want to be a lawyer, and I'm telling I hope I hope that person listening right now, you don't have to worry now. You don't have to take the bar. <laughs> you don't have to do what the white people do. You don't have to earn it. The, the bar test is for the white folks. That's too hard for the blacks. What's up? Can you imagine hiring a lawyer that did not take the bar or the, the lawyer test? They put in that everywhere now. Air traffic controllers, pilots, everything. And I want to show you black excellence in the schools. Fighting in the schools. And this is beautiful black excellence. Watch this compilation. 
You know, I blame the white parents for that because it's the white parents who keep sending their children to those schools with the black. Ain't no way in uh, hell or heaven I would send my child to a black school. The boy can beat up because his parents are too weak. They're afraid of being called racist, so they put their white children's lives at risk. That reminded me of when I, I lived up in Gary, Indiana for a minute, from Alabama to Gary, called myself rebelling against my grandparents. And they're like, okay, go ahead. You'll be back. <laughs> I, went to, I went to Edison, Edison High School in Gary, Indiana. And when I first got there, it was really nice. They had a white mayor of the city. Gary, in Indiana, was beautiful. There was no second thought about walking down the road. And so Edison High School was an amazing high school. And then somebody decided they needed a black mayor for Gary, Indiana. They needed a black male mayor from Gary, Indiana, for Gary, Indiana. And they voted in, at some point they voted in a guy by the name, I think Richard Hatchett or something, Richard somebody. And that very next day, not a week later, not a few days later, that very next morning, after the election of a black mayor for Gary, Indiana, all hell broke loose, like what you see there, and even worse. The black kids were jumping on the white kids and fighting them in the classrooms, up and down the hallway, uh, on the bus. All hell. I didn't even know that undertone was even there at the time. I didn't know that those black kids were hating the whites. I did not know until that next morning. And I'm like, what the? I was traumatized. Because <laughs> I grew up in Alabama going to an all-black school, and I didn't know that black people were like that. It wasn't like that in Alabama. Wikipedia, Richard Gordon Hatcher was an American politician who served as the first African-American mayor of Gary, Indiana, for 20 years. No, one had never returned for 20 years from 1968 to 1988, according to Wikipedia. All hell broke loose. At the time, I had white friends and black friends, mostly white, but a few black ones, too. And overnight, they were gone. Their parents packed up and left. They said, uh-uh, my child ain't going to, uh -uh, what happened? I remember I, I took this class, mechanical drawing class, at Edison High School. And I had never even heard of mechanical drawings. But I, I didn't have that in Alabama, but I took it up there. I couldn't figure it out for nothing. And I had a white friend who would help me with it. It was amazing. He was very smart with that kind of stuff. He used to help me with it. And overnight, after the fight, after they got the black mayor, Richard Gordon Hatcher, and the blacks started to attack the whites, overnight, my friend just disappeared. 
I never seen him again. He just his pen packed up, and we were in like the eleventh grade or so, twelve, somewhere in the eleventh or twelve. And overnight, my friend was gone without even having a chance to say goodbye. He was gone. All my white friends was gone. <laughs> I'm like, it was like they vanished up away. I didn't know you could move that fast. <laughs> I had no idea that you could pack up a home and be gone overnight. Talk about white flight. flight. They must have one of those Elon Musk get out of town spaceships. <laughs> it was great. I don't even know where he went. <laughs> I haven't seen him since. He was gone. It just disappeared. What the? Really, I have no idea. And I went over to, because they lived across the, from the school. And so I was like, let me go look and see where my friend at. Where, where my white friend? <laughs> and the house was empty. <laughs> I don't even know if they sold the house or they just left it. <laughs> We got never heard from them again, and so I don't really know how they got out that fast. But he was gone. <laughs> Talk about going to find the sunshine and leave the rain. I can see clearly now the clock. The rain is gone. He was gone. I'm not making this story up. I'm telling you. They were just overnight gone. Joel said he black. Joel said he went to a black school in the sixth grade and haven't recovered since. <laughs> I can see Joel in a black school. And they think he's white. Yeah, hell the bay. What a mess. Black excellent at work. It wasn't like that. Don't let anyone tell you that it was like that in Alabama. Now, maybe up in Montgomery, the city part, once they started that so-called civil rights movement, which was one of the worst things that ever happened to the blacks. Maybe over there they were doing it, but down where I live, it was not happening at all. Zero. What a mess. Let me go to... Michael out of Delaware, 888-775-3773. Michael, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, how's it going, Jesse? All this well, sir. You better be lucky I'm not black. Y'all had me waiting for two hours yesterday. I, I was going to ask for reparations, but I can't do that. I'm Puerto Rican. Oh, yeah. It's only for the blacks, buddy. <laughs> uh, I, I had a question, right? Yeah. So, well, well, all the stuff that's going on, right? And I'm a believer in God, and I've always was afraid to purchase a gun because I don't believe in taking somebody's life. And I was thinking about buying one this weekend. I just wanted your opinion on that first. You say you you hesitated to buy one because you don't believe in taking someone's life? Yeah. I don't understand that. Like if that. somebody broke into my house, like if, like if I had to defend myself and somebody broke into my house, would it still be wrong under God's eye? Because you know how he said you, you should not kill? Not that I'm going to go out and shoot nobody. I'm saying like if for self-defense, if I'm home and somebody breaks in and I have to defend myself, is that still wrong under God's eye to have a gun? You don't think that God wants you to defend yourself? That's what I, I, I'm unsure of. I mean, Jesus didn't want his disciples to defend him, so that's why I wanted your opinion on it. Jesus didn't want what now? His disciples to defend him when they were going to take him. Jesus didn't want his disciples to defend, to defend Jesus? Yeah. But that was spiritual. He had a mission that he had to do. He had to okay. die for you so all your sins would be wiped away. That's why you're not okay. a sinner anymore. I don't right, know so what that had to do with guns. Yeah, because I don't know. I just always thought some type of way about owning a gun uh, and... I always thought just maybe just have faith in God, 
that nothing's going to happen. But with all the stuff that's going on nowadays, I'm like, maybe it's time for me to purchase one for my home. How old are you? 33. Uh, Michael, that shouldn't even be a question. Should I have the right to defend myself? If someone yeah. is trying to hurt you, common sense says you have a you have a right to defend yourself. Right. And they right. know what there's a way. You what do you think? Jesus was a soft dummy? No. Beta. Oh, beta. Michael, do what you want concerning purchase uh, protecting yourself. But that shouldn't even be a question that okay. should you have a right to defend yourself if you about to get hurt? That That's just common sense, man. Yeah, okay. And then I, I got another question. Um, I have I have friends that I, I debated with, right? He He was invited to a gay wedding. And I told him that's not a real marriage, that God does not condone that. He, he doesn't agree with it. Me, personally, I wouldn't attend that wedding because it's not real. He says he feels like even though it's wrong, since he's not the one getting married, he could attend that wedding. What do you say about that? I would have said, well, I wish you well. Go ahead on. Because that's his life. If he want to live that way, he has a right to. And it's not, even, it up, it's not even up for a debate. But is it wrong is what I'm trying to say. It's neither wrong nor right. If he want to live in his hell... You shouldn't debate him to try to convince him not to. You must live your life to overcome the hell and let them live. Every other individual have a right to stay in their hell. It's neither right nor wrong. That's what they want to do. Let them do it. You don't see God trying to debate him and keep him out, right? Yeah, but isn't it our job to tell them, like, what's right and wrong if they ask or if the subject comes about? It's not your job to do that at all. If they ask, you just point them back to the source that would allow them to see because you can't make them see. You have to allow them. Here, you are worried about getting a gun to protect yourself if need be. How are you going to debate somebody else how to live? Oh, man. Oh, you got to go there, Jesse. (laughs) (laughs) What are you doing? So what? (laughs) You black. <laughs> what do you think about that? You can't decide whether you want to protect yourself or not, and yet you're going to tell another person what they can and cannot do? Listen, I, listen, Jesse. No, what do you listen. think about that first? And then you can come in. Okay, look, you're absolutely right. I understand what you're saying. You're right. I'm, I can't debate that. But what I'm saying is I wasn't trying to tell him what to do. I was just telling him that I wouldn't do it because it's wrong. Right. Now, if you say, you know what, go ahead, do what you want, I understand it. I wouldn't do it. But if you want to do it, stay in your hell. I wish you well. So would you go? Would you go again? I don't know. I, I have to wait and see. Okay. I debated, I mean, not debated, but I interviewed on the Fall of State yesterday a woman who looked like a man. She became a, a male on the outside. It was so interesting. Right. I can't wait for you to see it, Michael. Oh, yeah, because I watch all your shows. I've seen the last one with the Buddhist lady. Oh, what a mess. Oh, man, my, I love your my, shows, man. I, I got my wife watching it now. Thank you, man. I got to take a break. Back in a moment. So, here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer. Um, I know some people have called in, and they wonder if the silent prayer is working. And I just want to take a second and, and to tell them that it works. You just have to stick with it. Yeah. Um. That's the first thing I started doing before I even forgave my parents. And I was so depressed and suicidal at some times that I I just would have to stop in the middle of my job or whatever I was doing and go into the silent prayer. And it it really does help. Like, I I don't have those anymore. Amazing. Um, You haven't seen anything yet. Doubt every thought. Bring every thought into captivity. Just let them all pass. Don't judge them. You haven't seen anything. It gets better and better and better and easier, easier, easier. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Oh. 
whole lot of confusing news about the invasion in Texas. Uh, maybe I'll be able to straighten it out. Maybe not. And uh, in Haiti, it's a big mess. Abortion, as you may have heard earlier in Hake News the other day, is on the rise. Over a million abortions in the United States. First time in a while that it's been like that. And primaries, blah, blah, blah. This is the end of hour one of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It is uh, Wednesday, March 20th, AD 2024. There is one line open. You can call in right now during Hake News, not Fake News. 888-77-JESSE, 1-888-775-3773, if you're catching it during the live hours. Uh, Invasion in Texas, coming on Sense Network CNN, and the far-left female-run outlet The Skim both reported on this. Yesterday, a federal appeals court put a controversial, meaning halfway reasonable, immigration law on hold hours after the so-called Supreme Court sided with Texas after all. Yesterday, I had reported that the so-called Supreme Court temporarily blocked or indefinitely blocked the law, but later, I cracked, later they let it go and go forward with a 6-3 majority, and now another appeals, appeals court, a federal appeals court, I guess arguing about something else, put it on hold. Hours after the Supreme Court sided with Texas, the high court's ruling initially allowed Texas to enforce SB4, temporarily at least, which allows state authorities to arrest illegals and deport those suspected of crossing the border illegally. They call them migrants. The 6-3 to SCOTUS Supreme Court of the United States decision rejected the Biden administration's emergency application, which argued states cannot impede on federal authority over the border. Uh, immigration advocates, people who support the destruction of the country by way of invasion, said that the law would encourage racial profiling and discrimination, like that's a bad thing. Uh, Meanwhile, Mexico said that they would not accept any deportations under any circumstances. What a mess, huh? Uh, Now the appeals court has blocked the law again and is expected to hear arguments in the case today. Haiti, maybe they're already hearing it, I don't know. Haiti, hundreds of Americans, so-called Americans, stuck in Haiti amid sprawling crisis that has uh, brought rampant gang violence to the streets of Port-au-Prince. That's the capital of Haiti, per CNN, coming on since network. State Department Deputy Spokesman Vedant Patel, nice American name, told Coming On Sense Tuesday that nearly a thousand Americans in Haiti have reached out, reached out, meaning tried to contact the U.S. government. Haiti Air, Haitian airline Sunrise Airwaves separately announced that they will operate special flights between Cap Haitian, a city on Haiti's north coast, and Miami on March 25th. The airline previously told Kami Nonsense that they had suspended all flights on March 1st due to safety reasons. The crisis in Haiti intensified earlier this month as criminal gangs and militias began wreaking havoc on businesses, leaving necessities including food, medicine, and gas, in short supply. What a mess, huh? Abortion on the rise. Meanwhile, in America, there were more than one million abortions provided, provided, they call it, in the United States last year, according to a report published yesterday. I mentioned that from the Guttmacher Institute yesterday, actually. Uh, That's the most in over a decade, with so-called medication abortions accounting for 63%. Of all abortions, they're poisoning those babies to kill them. Still, the findings considered to be an undercount. The report comes almost two years after the so-called Supreme Court rightly overruled Roe v. Wade, allowing more than a dozen states to ban or restrict abortion access, communist buzzword. Health officials say the report highlights the work that clinics and abortion funds have done to help people in the wake of state bans. Help people kill the children, obviously. Last year, over 160,000 women crossed state lines to seek care in places like Illinois and New Mexico. Did you know that? Where medication abortion is still legal. At least for now, the Supreme Court is hearing arguments on that, too. What a mess. And uh, I'll tell you about the primaries later. Crooked Joe, our greatest president, and some others in, like, Ohio. But uh, we will be ba- right back to the Jason Lee Peterson Show. Women's Forum is tomorrow night, ladies, third Thursday of the month, 7 p.m. at Bond. I'm Jim Seek. <laughs> i
Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show today. Second hour of the show today. You can get involved if you want to jump in there. There are two lines right now, 888-773-773-888-773-773. Amazing. My biblical question, do you have morals and values? If so, where did you find them? Do you have morals and values? If so, where did you find them? We have every way that you can watch and support the show. Listen on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're too busy to just sit and watch the show right now, as it is happening, you can podcast, but you can be listening no matter what you're doing. Land up at a beach. A drug lord trying to help the folks get over here for money. Um, a black liberal so-called judge of a court trying to stop Texas from protecting itself from the illegal aliens. Or saying that an illegal alien can have the right to Second Amendment and you don't. Whatever you might be doing. You can be listening on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line at 641-793-1500. 641-793-1500. Oh, amazing. You can support our social media. Support our social media. Like, follow, ring the bell, subscribe. Rumble.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson and Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram to donate and have your comments read out loud. Go to buy me a coffee. Buy me a coffee.com slash JLP talk or bond JLP. On Cash App, Bond JLP on Cash App. Amazing, huh? So Manhood Hour is coming up in the next hour. Every third hour of the show on Wednesday, Manhood Hour. Let me go quickly to some callers. We've been waiting for a while. Derek is out of Tennessee. Derek, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse, uh, I just wanted to thank you so much for the counseling session um, the other day. Uh, everything is different now. Uh, I'll tell you, after we talked, um, I totally had a meltdown and did everything I shouldn't do. <laughs> I wrote the girl a letter and uh, <laughs> what the? broke down and that hum. What the? It, I know. And I was sobbing and crying. And at the end, I I was like, I, I, you know, I'm like, well, this does me no good if I don't apply anything you told me. Um, and I'm like, I have to put every thought into captivity. I have to, you know, every thought, they're all lies. And, uh, I did, I did that and um it, it 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 made it made the biggest difference um and usually when I 
I've had a breakup. You know, I was engaged to the girl and and everything. And usually I go into more self-destructive kind of activities. I'm like, I have no desire to do that. Um, you know, I, I want to be of love and be closer to the father. And it, it's, it's really, um, it's really bizarre. I got to tell you, I, I, I'm so grateful. I, I'm not even explaining it well, but I, I'm very thankful for the, the counseling session. And, uh, it, it it's, uh, it really is the best counseling session um, service this side of heaven, as you said. So I just wanted to thank you for that. You're welcome, um, and there, stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. I don't care what the thoughts tell you or what uh, uh, other people try to tell you to get you to turn away from what is right, because evil works through human beings to try to stop you when you're trying to overcome evil. You stay with it. You stay with it. You stay with it. You haven't seen anything yet. It gets better. I mean, it just becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. And your heart will be of love and your mind will be clear. And I realize that I shouldn't even seek a woman or marriage or babies or any of that. I, right. If I look for that, everything will be awful. Um, I, I just need to... Seek the Father, and if if that's to be given to me, um, it will be. And if it's not, it won't, because I would have destroyed that woman, and she would have destroyed me. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I and I I thought about it. I go, I don't, I don't want to destroy anybody nor myself. And I, I'm just really grateful that you pointed me in the right direction. Saint, really grateful. Satan tell you to seek money, seek a woman or tell a woman to seek a man, seek a family or seek this or seek that, seek a position in life, seek whatever, right? Where God tell you only seek what is right and everything will be added unto you. You should not seek anything or anyone, but only what is right, the kingdom of heaven, and all will be added to you. It'll be perfect and it would be you wouldn't have to even make it work. Life would just happen naturally yeah. without your effort at all. So if if it is meant for you to have a wife and a family, it will happen without your effort, and it would be a marriage that would last until death do your part without you putting anything into that marriage, not one thing. And and I was trying to make it work. That's what I was doing. Yeah. And you can't um, make it and work. I'm not angry at her. I'm not angry. You know, I, I spoke about her mother with you and I was like, Oh, I'm no better than her. I was angry. That's right. And I can't yeah, I, I if I'm angry at anybody, right, it doesn't there's no good that comes from that. And all so angry it, people are evil. Anyone right. that has anger is an evil person, and you cannot trust an angry person. We call and, and since she left, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Since she left, I've gotten a couple of angry messages, you know, from from her family, and I go, "Oh, that's okay. They can't help themselves, just like I can't help myself, right? I can't help myself, right? <laughs> and I it it." it, it it, it's life has gotten a lot simpler since that counseling session. I, I just, you know, I'm just doubting thoughts all day. That's all, all I do. Did and you, so did you want, respond to their angry message messages? Uh, I, uh, I did. And I said, you say I'm you sorry did you're or upset. you didn't? I did. And I said, I'm sorry you're upset. I'm sorry you're angry. You know, and, and, I just apologize. Like I just said, I'm sorry you're angry. You know, essentially, but I didn't, you know, react to it. I just said sorry you're upset. Um, but I did respond Derek, to the, to the one. Derek, do it to one, of yes, course. Sir. Do it to one. Never, ever, ever. But never, 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 ever, never, ever, ever again. But do it to one. But never. Ever, ever, I don't care who it is. 
never, ever, 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 but never respond to an angry person. No response at all. You don't owe that to them or anyone, really. Human beings are evil. Anyone that think you owe them a response to their evilness, to their revenge, revenge for nature, or anything, you don't. Those are evil no people. No response at all. No response. You argue with the devil inside of you and outside of them, and that's what they want you to respond to them so they can feel that they have a sense of control over you. The, the hell in them is constantly trying to control because they're being controlled by evil and the evil in them make them feel they got to control somebody so they can have a false sense of life. And, you and don't I feel owe like them a so- response or anything at all and you don't have a right, zero right, to either be angry at them or apologize for them being angry at you. You shouldn't feel anything about anyone being angry at you because they're evil and you're supporting evil when you do that. And I remember when I first called the show, I was like, oh, how how can I teach her how to forgive? And you're like, have you forgiven your mother? I'm like, <laughs> oh, I don't need to forgive my mama. And, and you're like, yeah, you do. And I went and did it, and it made all the difference in the whole world. The whole relationship uh, is different. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, it, 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 but I realized you're totally right. I, I, I was no different than her mother or any. Like I was just using her in a way. Like, and you know, I will tell you. Uh, what's odd is when I I went. I, I, it was like four or five days after I talked to you, I was just breaking down. I mean, really breaking down. And and I'm like, Derek, you've got to get your head around this, right? All these thoughts, they're not true. And and it finally came in to focus. And what I, in, you know, how do you say it? Like, you're not in love with someone, you're in sex with someone. Right. The sex was good, but I, I was really, <laughs> what, what I... Uh, and, and it was excellent, but, but I was really like into like, we were playing house, you know, she did the laundry and we were like, she wanted to be a housewife and, and we wanted, you know, but I'm like, Oh, that's all a lie too. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because I, I, uh, and I, because I didn't have my head straight and, and I'm starting to get there and well, I, I, you know, I, I'm so grateful uh, when, when for, for your, you're absolutely yes, welcome, man, but I want to encourage you, and then I got to run because of time. I want to encourage you to stay with it now. Don't look for anything. Don't look for friendship. Don't look for family ship. Don't look for ship ship. Look for nothing but the kingdom of heaven. And it is within you. And if you keep eye on the not you, you're not your thoughts, and you're not your, those emotions, you're not your body. If you just watch that, Everything will be done for you on your behalf. Of ourselves, we can do nothing. Of ourselves, we know nothing. When you let go of all ideas and expectations and all that mess, all your little plans and stuff for practical ones, right. you want to take a vacation or whatever. But if when you let go, I promise you, you shall be free. And that's all I have to do, right? That's, Just watch the thoughts, nothing, and they're not me. There's nothing else you need to do but that. You want to be the watcher. Well, Jesse, I appreciate you, and uh, thanks for taking the call today. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Stay with it, buddy. You got it, sir. All right. Amazing. We have the best counseling service on this side of heaven. Um, family intimated by phone, Skype, or walk-in. And if you want it, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com, rebuildingtheman.com, or rebuildingtheman.com, or call 800-411-1111. Bond. Okay. Amazing. 
But you got to work on you. No one else can do it for you. No one. And you got to work on you. And no one else can do it but you. And no one can travel the straight and narrow road with you. This is one thing, and I know most people don't like being alone, don't like traveling alone. They love the crowd because they get a false sense of security, a false sense of love, and all, it's all fake, but it's not real. So, you know, like, but this is one journey you're going to have to take all by yourself. All by myself. You got to take it alone. It ain't going to work no other way. And every human being, not one left out. Every human being, whether rich or poor, so-called, homeless, drug addict, non-drug addict, cartel, uh, gang member, black radicals, or whatever, you're never going to be free until you forgive your mothers. Every human being must forgive their mother and return to their father by forgiving their fathers for not protecting them from the mother. And you shall be free. You must be born again. Dwayne out of New York. Dwayne, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Uh, hey, how are you, Jesse? All is well, Dwayne. Dwayne. Yeah, I was just calling because um, I needed some advice from you. Okay. Yeah, so I had, uh, like, I've been listening to you for a while, and uh, I got myself into a situation that I knew from the beginning I shouldn't have, and then now everything is, like, crashing and burning. So I'm just, like, wondering what's the best option I can take to get out of that situation. I, I Like, I ended up moving in with my girlfriend. And now everything is falling apart. <laughs> we're, both, like, we're, both, we're both on the lease, and now everything's like falling apart, and she needs space and everything, and like we can't, like we can't do it in the same house together. So like, I don't like I didn't have any money saved up or anything, so I don't really know what. Like, should I just? I can ask my dad maybe and like I can move in with him or have a friend that would like take me in, but I don't know if that could be permanent. So I was just like, what, what should be the best advice for me? Are you able to move out of there without, uh, having responsibility for the lease once you're gone? Yeah, she'll, she'll just take over and pay everything. Make sure she put that in writing. Okay. Make sure she give you something that says, um, um, Dwayne is leaving. I'm something like I'm okay with this. I promise I'll take complete control of the lease. He's no longer responsible for the lease. We're in agreement of that. Have her date and sign it, and you hold on to that for dear life. Because as you are overcoming, if you should overcome, she's gonna get worse, and she's gonna try to pretend you're still responsible for the lease. Okay. Uh, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I feel like like before I got with her, I feel like I was on the right track and everything. And then once it happened, I just started just to become weak. Of course, because you and went into the woman's hell. Every time the man yeah, listens to the woman, he will suffer. Ain't no way around and it. And I, I knew, like, going into it, I, I shouldn't do it, but I just I couldn't help it. And why not? Why couldn't you help it? Um... I, I don't know. I just like. I guess I just wanted it. <laughs> like I, I couldn't. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know how to explain it. But I, I like knew it deep, deep down. I knew it wasn't gonna work. I knew it. Sh I shouldn't do it. And then I just like got weak, and I just couldn't control anything. And I would just go along with whatever. I understand. And and you're right. You did it because you wanted it. And even though there were signs along the road that says, don't go that route, go this way, go straight, keep going this way, that way, you wanted it so you disobeyed the signs because you, you wanted what you wanted, and now you've gotten the hell that you wanted from it, calling it heaven. 
But you got to stop yeah. wanting anything. Do not want okay. for anything. You just do your practical thing, get a job, buy some food, pay, pay your rent, over, keep the roof over your head. But do not want for anyone or anything. You will always end up in hell by wanting for anything. Yeah, and I definitely feel like I'm in hell right now, especially these past two or three weeks. Like, even like yesterday was my birthday, and it was like the worst birthday ever because I'm <laughs> going through all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what a mess! I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, like, uh, so you you want to know should you want to know should you move in with your father or a friend? Yeah, like, my, my dad, I have a sister. Like, my dad has another child. Like, it's my sister. We're, like, the same age, though. But he live, they live together. And um, I, I'm i pretty sure he'll let me, like, go and stay in with him. And I also have a friend. Like, I already talked to him about the situation. And he also told me, like, if I, like, really need to, I can go and stay with him as well. But I wasn't sure if it would be, like, that would be the best thing to do, even though my name is on the lease and I pay half of the rent. Your name is on the lease with your friend? No, it was, was my ex-girlfriend now. Oh, okay. Like, my name was on the lease with her, so I wasn't sure. Are you still going to have to, you, but you won't have to pay any money when you leave this woman, right? She, no, she, she said I wouldn't. And before, like, I was on the lease with her, she was paying rent by herself. So I don't, I don't think it would be a problem. Okay. Like, I honestly just think she just doesn't want anything to do with me anymore. She just wants me to go away and she can live her own life and I live mine. <laughs> well, women, so I, I don't, women I, I do don't hate, hold weak, on to that. Women do hate weak men. That's for sure. So she definitely wants you to and, go away. And she, de it, it's crazy because I, I know she hates me. Like she doesn't want to say it or maybe she doesn't realize it. Right. But she's like, she says she's confused because like I have done like a lot of things to help her and like I've been there for her and everything, but she, I'm not like she before everything. She liked to go out and party and have fun. And I was never really into that. I was always like stay by myself and just simple, like just the basic things I'm fine with. And so now that's all like now that we're like broken up, but still living together. She wants to do all those things that she used to do. And like the way she's going about it is like, I would say pretty disrespectful. So it's, it's just hard to be in that environment. But the one thing I want you to know, you have not done anything to help her at all. You've only done things to help your own ego. And, mm. and because if you had done anything to help her, you never would have moved in with her, first of all. You never would have, uh, you never would have moved in with her and don't have money to pay the bill. That doesn't make sense. But here's what you do. Now, you do what you see is best for you, not just because I said it. I'm not in you. I'm not there. And it's not happening yeah. to me. It's happening to you. But if you can live with your father for a while, I think you probably should live with your father, depending on how he treats you. But I wouldn't stay there that long. I would stay there long enough to get me a job. And when I have the right amount of money to move, I'll get my own place and just continue moving forward like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, my dad treats me well. Like, he apologized to me for not being there for me when I was growing up and everything like that. Oh, good. Well, I, I, if that's fine with him, I would move in with him rather than the friend. Okay. Because the friend can get you attitude, too, after a while. Yeah. After two weeks, okay. you wonder who ate up all his peanut butter <laughs> and, and <laughs> out of the refrigerator. So, I would, how old are you? I just turned 30 yesterday. Oh, happy birthday, man. Thank you. Well, I would do that. I would just pack my bags and leave. And if you can get in writing, you're no longer responsible for the lease. You both agree to this, and she's going to take completely control of it and have her sign it and date it and just keep that with you. Okay, I can do that. All right. And, and, and go back to the silent prayer and just work on you and want for nothing. 
Don't let Satan yeah, tell you that you, you need a family. You need this. You need. He's lying to you. He's setting you up. I was doing that the silent prayer last night, and my mind was just going crazy. Yeah. Like not, I, I, it was. Well, I couldn't even. You can even what? Yeah, it was just crazy. I, I like I couldn't. I couldn't do anything. It was just like going crazy. I like I couldn't even keep doing the silent prayer because I just. It was just too much. Well, just know all those thoughts you were seeing was not you. And the beauty is you are able to see them, and they do not want, those are evil spirits, and they do not want you to see that they have made a home in you, and they have been controlling you. Because those, I, those spirits, they hate you. What human beings don't realize is that spirits in your mind and body, with their, thought, with their calling their own thoughts and feelings, you are mm-hmm. detested by those spirits. They hate you. And their only yeah. mission is to destroy you. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, I, I've listened to you for a while. Like, when I first started listening to you, I smoked a lot of pot. And, like, I feel like I learned everything intellectually. So then when I stopped smoking and I had to apply it in real life, I, I didn't know what to do. You're like, what the? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well just go back to it. Don't think about the past. There is no such thing in the past. As a past or future, it's all in your mind. It's a lie. It's a setup. And just start living right now. Every day is a brand new day. Every moment is a brand new moment. And and there is no past or future. Just start out. Start right now, all right? All right, I will. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, buddy. Let me know how it goes. Okay, I will. All right. Bye. All right, bye. Amazing. Adrian. Is out of Florida. Adrian, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Amazing. Um, so uh, what I wanted to mention was, so this morning um, I had to come out. I'm in Florida, and I had to go to a store, CVS store. And uh, no one could help me because no one spoke English, right? And... Then I went to the Walgreens, same thing happened. This was about 6 o'clock this morning. So what I noticed in me was, well, first, I understand, I'm starting to understand, or I'm starting to accept the fact that when you say America is not coming back, it's not coming back. And are you still there? I'm listening, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. And when you say, when you talk about all the things in and we have to, uh, and, and you show what, what's really happening, how it affects me. And I realized that it's just not coming back. And now I don't know what to do with myself. And I'm, take a moment, breathe, and I'm trying to watch the emotions. And so I see there's a lot of fear and anger, but isn't fear, anger, or they're just the same? They just have different names. They're the same. They're both evil. Right. So I, I saw it in me and I don't want it there and I don't want to feel whatever it is I'm feeling. And I'm I'm just like, wow, it's, America's gone. I truly am alone. I realize that about my family. Um, and I, I let some people go. And it's just, I guess what I'm trying to say, it's not really a question. I'm just saying that I, I see what you're talking about as the layers come off. But it's just so shocking, and the pain is so much when you're able to see it. Like, I shouldn't have been upset this morning that nobody could help me, and they were indignant towards me on top of that. (laughs) Uh, You you know what I'm saying? But don't say racism, but these people are racist, (laughs) or fake racist, whatever you call it. And I just, I'm hoping I'm staying on the path, Mr. Mr. Peterson, but uh, the pain is just... But I'm wondering, why were you angry about that this morning? Can you hold for me? Um, Yes. Uh, Hold on. I want to know, why were you angry about everything that happened this morning? Back in a moment. I have books that are amazing. I highly recommend you get them. Seven Guaranteed Steps to Spiritual, Family, and Financial Success Guide. 
even if you're not starting a business, but you have a job, or you're on welfare, it can help you if you do. Be doers of the word, all right? From rage to responsibility, from rage. That's why I write about, in the first chapter, especially how I overcame. Scam, how the black leadership exploits black Americans. They are using them, and blacks are too willing to be used. And then my last book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. They are all amazing books, and they are helpful. Go to rebuildingtheman.com if you want an autograph copy or call 800-411-2663. Excuse me, welcome back. 888-775-3773. 888-77-JESSE. Couple of announcements. The Hate Report is coming up at 9 a.m. this morning. The Hake, H-A-K-E Report, dot com at 9 a.m. Pacific Time from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific Time. And then after the Hake Report, Joel Friday TV, he black. Joel Friday TV at 11 a.m. this morning. And after Joel Friday TV at 12 noon Pacific time, the American Anchor Baby, the American Anchor Baby, energy through the roof. Not how pot, but natural energy. And an expert at flying because he learned to fly on Google at 12 noon. You don't want to miss it. And then uh, tomorrow night, ladies, Women's Forum. I'm looking forward to the Women's Forum tomorrow night. It's going to be a doozy at 7 p.m. Last month when we had the Women's Forum, a discussion or something happened, and I was stunned. I was shocked. But it made people free. Isn't that amazing? Ladies tonight, men, the first Thursday night of the month, and Sunday for everybody and their mama. If you're black, everybody and their mama. If you're white, everyone, everybody and their mother or everybody and their mama. Brand new episode of The Father State on Friday. Brand new episode. A very interesting discussion with... I can't hear you. Fatima, Fatima, something like that. Gilliam, Gilliam. She is a racial ethicist attorney, and author of Race Rules. What your black friends won't tell you. Watch this. Next time on The Fallen State. Are you black or white? I am black. Did y'all have a white mailman? <laughs> Maybe you should put a sign on this. Is I'm black. Jesse, I think out the gates, it's clear that you and I have completely divergent political views on things. But... Could the black person be racist as well? No, because I don't believe that black people can be racist. What's wrong with you? The great white hope. What do you think? I think that those look like they are perfect as dog chew toys. What a mess! <laughs> it was an amazing discussion. It really, really, really was. This Friday at 
12 noon Pacific time. And you can support the Father State right there, Father State, the Father State TV slash donate or rumbles.com, rumble.com. Click in the link there to support it. Uh, let me go quickly by, there's one line at 888-775-3773. Adrian had an experience this morning where she went out to a couple of stores and it was mostly foreigners running it. They couldn't understand her and she got ticked where she became <laughs> angry. <laughs> and then she realized she's really losing her country and she was angry and scared, had fear. Why did you get angry this morning at the workers? Um, it, it just overtook me that fast. So I went back in my car and I was like, it's not personal. It's not you who's getting angry, but but it happened, Jesse. Um, so that's the only. Uh, I don't because it just. I, I guess I went unconscious. Right. And, but what I'm realizing is, is that you know how you say we're never responsible for the things we've done. So I realized because of the way I was brought into this world and all the things that happened to me in the or that happened at one time to open up that portal, there's so much that God's going to have to do. And so um, I'm, I'm not comfortable when it happens, when I feel a feeling, because I quickly try to to myself, like, all right, wait, this is not you, this is not you. But I, I'm not going to lie, Jesse. It's like the, uh, it's so overwhelming how the feeling in your body, in your mind, just, just makes it feel like it's you. No matter how many times I tell myself it's not me, it's not me. Calm down, let it go, let it go, let it go. You know, I had asked that question when I went to visit you. So letting go, I think, I'm never going to be able to defeat the devil without Jesus. I know that much. Yeah. You're so never going to defeat right the now? devil without what? I'm never, the devil's never going to be defeated in my life without Jesus. I can't do it because the mind trick and uh, it's just amazing to me. It's, it's just crazy how... One minute I'm I'm angry, a, a feeling just comes, and then I'm like, stop. I, I recognize it, and I'm like, let it go, let it go, let it go. But then you're stuck with the guilt because it, you have the feeling, even though you don't want to be that way. You don't want to walk in. You don't want those kind of things taking you over. But And I don't want to be taken over by it. But I, I just wanted to just say that. It's, there's no question. It's just, you know... Um, well, one, I don't know. One thing I want you to know is that the devil and all his little demons have already been defeated. Jesus has already done what he needs to do, and they're already defeated. And you just believe the lie of the imagination, which is of the devil. If you can ever just not believe anything about thought, period. I'm then you would be it, free. You would just be free, and you would see that the devil is defeated already. The devil has no authority, no power at all, but to tempt you to believe him by making you think that those are your thoughts. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything, no matter what. Right, right. But, Jesse, I tell myself that, and then, and then, and then it disappears, and then it comes back, and then it disappears, and I just... I know not to ask, or there's no point in even saying, well, when's it going to be over? But but I am aware of it, but I, I want to be more than aware of it. I want to... It's going to be, be over, over when you start... And yeah, never say when it's going to be over. That's the devil, too. But when you start staying present instead of living in your head about anything, and then it's over. Stay out of your head. And but just is there an in-between? Is there a spot where you're, you're trying to get there? I... I I don't know what you mean. Like, is it, or you're going to say it's imagination maybe, but it's like, the, even though you can't strive because there's nothing I could do about it, but it's like, 
I am looking at myself. I am paying attention. I am noticing. I see it. I see it. I see it. Uh, but it's not instantaneously gone. So what I'm saying is, I just need you to tell me if you think, am I still headed towards the light? Whatever that would mean. I don't know. Just for the sake of words. Um, well, uh, there's no such thing as headed toward the light. Okay. When you, when you doubt thought you're in the light. Just doubt. And, when you stop right. believing thoughts, you're in the light. You, you don't have to be headed toward anywhere. You just need to be. Right. And just one more thing. So, like, I catch glimpses of, I understand, I, I see he hates me, uh, that thing. Um, last the devil, week I woke up. The devil and his little demons in the mind and body of human beings, all human beings, until they overcome, hates. Human being hate him with I, a passion. I and know, I know. He hate know, every I human know. being. That's why he promised to destroy them and kill them. Yeah. Because he but, hate, and you don't even know the depths of the hatred that he has for you. And that's why no. I want human beings to understand that any little bit of hate, of anger, is evil. Right. And it's full of bloody hatred. And that's why you should never trust an angry person. Right, including myself. But what happened was last week I woke up and immediately thought flooded my head. And I was like, no, I'm going to be still. And I heard it say something. And then it said, I could say bitch, because bitch is a female dog. But it said bitch. <laughs> and for a second, I got a glimpse of it. Whoa, like, bitch. Hearing the voice in my head, but knowing the voice wasn't mine, like I had a, a glimpse of it. And then I was driving, and some guy went crazy on the road on me. And for a second, I felt my, I, I, was, I was able to catch it. I felt myself getting ready to feel something. And then I just looked at him, and I was like, that's the devil in him, the hatred. This guy is going off his rocker. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I'll see it. But then sometimes it just you just completely unconscious, and um, and that's why you should work yeah. on yourself at all times to be conscious, to stay present, to stay all present. Right. I'm 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 doing my best. It's just sometimes I don't understand what the present is, but I'm 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 I don't want to be full of hate. The present is where your body world. is at all times, and not in your head. There's no such thing as a past. You do not, right. you do not, you do not, not one human being has a past or a future. And so it's an, an illusion. And I promise you there's no such thing as a past. No matter what, even yesterday is not a past. You don't right. have it. And if you just yeah. present with your body, you'll be with the Father. You'll be in the light. And there's All nowhere right. to get far. to. Or anything, mm -hmm. you're already there. I'm gonna keep on. I'm yeah, keep stay on. with I'm it, stay with on. it, stay with it. Um, All right. You reminded me of something. Uh, I was talking to someone yesterday, mm -hmm. and we were talking about. They had heard me say how much the devil hate human beings. Period. He just hate human beings. Hate them with. There are no words to express the depths of his hate. Like there are mm -hmm. no words to express the love of God. Right. Um, mm -hmm. They even said me that when they were 16 years old, they were working on themselves. And one night they had just gotten into bed, and they said the devil whispered in their ear, I'm going to kill you. And they were like, what? Yeah. Uh, they heard it really yeah. clear. He said, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and they were like, what? Uh, That's what? how I felt when I heard it say, bitch. To me, I was like, that was not me. I was like, oh, my God. You know, and then a little bit of joy. You looked around and you went, what, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I heard it clearly. I was like, wow, okay. But it wasn't like I was my feelings hurt. I was happy for that one second to be like, wow, I saw that. Now, if I could just stay that way all day long, it would be amazing. <laughs> I mean, well, just relax right. and watch, all right? 
All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Love you all. Have a wonderful you day, too. everyone. You too. All Love right, you bye too. Bye. Okay. Bye. Amazing. Bye now. 888-7753-773. Super chat. Super chat. Super, super. Josh from Georgia bought a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash JLP talk. Biblical Georgia, question response. Oh my, my. What? Biblical question response. Josh from Georgia? Yep. Hey, Josh, do you have morals, morals and values? If so, where did you find them? I don't have morals and values. Because I don't have love. I see <laughs> morals, values, and love as synonyms. And the purpose of this life is to tap into the energy source that will use me to exemplify morals, values, and love. Says Amazing. Josh from Georgia. Thank you for responding, Josh. And I'll put my two cents in on Sunday, if the Lord is willing, and the creed will arrive. What are synonyms? Synonyms? Where is this it is the same as cinema rose. Nope. Words that mean the same thing. Different words that mean the same thing. Oh. And what did he say he had? Nothing. Oh. He didn't say what he has. Oh, okay. Thank you, Josh. Soul Conscious bought three coffees. Jesse, liberal whites think that Trump is the exception from these evil attacks by these black attorneys, but not realizing that these attacks are against all white people. If Trump fall, it is over for them. Can we say South Africa? Mommy Africa. For sure. Thank you. Gregatron bought a coffee. Jesse, the media knows exactly what it's doing. These people are millionaires who are getting paid to say this crap about the great white hope. They really can't be that stupid, but they think we're that stupid. The great white hope can't even talk about cars anymore without all hell breaking loose. What a shame. What a sad way to live. Amazing. Thank you. You're right. Aries 1 gave a couple of diamonds. No message. Thank you. Thank you. Charles bought a coffee. Jesse, Jesse, you can't hide. You can move genocide. <laughs> That's what I don't understand, too. I keep hearing that white people are superior, but yet the whites are afraid of the blacks, right? And then I hear from the whites, some of the white, not many, a few of the millennials who, who really don't know what they're talking about. But I keep hearing from some of the whites that says that the Jews are superior, that they control everything, right? And so, and then now I'm looking at the uh, Muslims in America running around talking about UK high. They are intimidating the whites and the Jews. They have the Jews and the whites on the run. So I'm like, Where's the real power then? Every blind person thinks that somebody has power over them. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. On Buy Me a Coffee, Shimshon bought three coffees. Sending you our love from Tiberias on the Sea of Galilee, Israel. Heart emoji. Right on. Thank you. I love Israel. If I was God and you wanted to go to heaven... One of the requirements to be, I don't care how much you observate, one of the requirements would be to get into heaven that you must have, you must have visited Israel before you die. Otherwise, you ain't getting into my heaven. <laughs> By the way, black angels are going to meet you at the, the gates and show you real black excellence. <laughs> Thank you. C on C bought a coffee. But everyone should visit Israel. You walk through the Bible, you learn so much. And you stop hating the Jews. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. C on C bought a coffee. Good morning, JLP show. Hassan Yeezy, how is Sandman? Oh, amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. It's C.I.? Yep. Thank you, C.I. Abe Lincoln bought a coffee. Where are the tribulations coming from? He asks. Tribulations, work with patience, and you lie from your mind only, from the imagination. When y'all wake up to the thoughts and you start to discover how wicked and deceiving thoughts are, the imagination, you're not going to believe it. You're going to, like, I just didn't know. You're going to shake your head. 
Amazing. Thank you. Mike Young bought a coffee. Not a pithy one. I'll do what I can. Hey, Jesse, guess what? Here's some black excellence for the late Richard Hatcher. Did you know that Hatcher served as campaign chair for Reverend Jesse Jackson when he ran for president in 1984, advisor to Jackson's 88 campaign? October 2019, the city of Gary unveiled a bronze statue of Hatcher in front of City Hall. As a first-generation black mayor identified with black power, Hatcher's agenda was considered biased against non-blacks. He believed by he was believed by his critics to be racially divisive and unqualified. Keep it piffy. <laughs> Thank you. Where he get that information from? Uh, I don't know. So we don't know if it's true or not. R- correct. Yeah, you, you have to reference your source. Thank you. Thank you, Mike Young. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Better know more about a coffee. Jesse, you're right. Ever since I stopped being a wife-worshipping beta, <laughs> my bond with both my sons became stronger. Yeah. They want me to be with want to be with me all the time. The other day, my eight-year-old son told me what his mom was telling him, and I had to correct her. She did not like it. Mothers don't love their kids. What the? Nope. But I tell you what I felt like my wife liked the fact I stood up against her, but that can be a thought. Yeah. Women, though they might fight you on it, they prefer you to stand up against the evil in them rather than give it into it. They hate you when you do it. And then if you, once you do give in to the evil, they have control of you. They love hate when you're trying to break away. They, they want you to break away, but they don't want you to break away. And it's not them, but it's that spirit that made a home in them. Amazing. Thank you. Valerie bought a coffee. Sean, it's all ego. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what that's reference to, but thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, just re- so you know, the producer's name is S E A N, Sean. Uh, I have books that are amazing, donated a diamond. Liberal black females are a mess. Haitians are worse. May God have, up- have mercy upon America once they get here. They're on their way. There are some down in Florida. What a mess. It's going to get worse. You can bank on it. Unless. The Green White Hope get in there. He can stop the flow. Amazing. Thank you. Evgeny Crosby with a couple of diamonds. Jesse, they just hired a black female police in my local community. It's over. Yep. Uh, what a mess. Somebody is setting it up, this thing up, by using the black female and the liberal white female to destroy America, break down everything that's good. And they know it. That's why they're using these women for that. Thank you. And thank you, guys. I do believe that that is all for now. Amazing. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Amon, 888-775-3773. Amon is all the way over in India. Amon, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Lucy. How are you? All is well, Amon. Speak up. Uh, I hear music. Is like is the break time coming? No. Yeah, I, I hear music a lot now. H- hold on, man. <laughs> hold on. Let me take a break. One more hour to go. There's one line open. Somebody wanted eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three. A quick break. Back in a moment. Hate is coming in with the hate news, not the fake news. I'll be back in a moment. We have a counseling service, and I have to admit, thanks to God, it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women, families, individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy, they're miserable, they have rough lives, they're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand, I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven.
Uh, I'm going to skip that boring primaries update. The world's happiest countries in 2024. I'll tell you about it, guys. This is the end of hour two of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It's Wednesday, March 20th, A.D., 2024. Stay tuned for hour three. Manhood hour is coming right up. But first, fake news, not fake news? Or is it fake news? After the Jesse Lee Peterson Show, the Hake Report... Dot com. After the Hake Report, Joel Friday TV. And after Joel Friday TV, American Anchor Baby. They are live Monday through Thursday at 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. Pacific Time, respectively. Joel Friday and American Anchor Baby. And then American Anchor Baby live at 4 p.m. on Fridays after the Fallen State at noon Pacific Time. Ladies, the, tomorrow is the third Thursday of the month, 21st of March. A.D. 2024, 7 p.m. at Bond in Los Angeles is the Women's Forum. Rebuildingtheman.com slash church if you need to check it out. Commie Nonsense Network CNN reports Finland has held on to its top ranking for seven years straight of the world's happiest country uh, on average. The survey each asks each participant to score their life as a whole considering what they value whether or not those values are right from God or Satan, right? Per John Helliwell, H-E-L-L-I-W-E-L-L, Emeritus Professor of Economics at Vancouver School of Economics, University of British Columbia in Canada, founding editor of the World Happiness Report. He said, you found out Finland is pretty rich in all of these things while it's being returned if they're dropped in the street. In other words, a high-trust society, people helping each other day in and day out, very high-quality, universally distributed health and education opportunities. So everyone more or less comes out of the start, starting gate at the same, he says. So claims he. He also noted that Finland has happy immigrants, so it's something that they're prepared to share with, get this word, newcomers. Newcomers. I bet you they're Somewhat strict on immigration. Not sure. Don't know. Maybe it's on decline. The report looks at key six key variables to help explain life evaluations. GDP per capita, social support, healthy life expectancy, freedom, so-called freedom, generosity, and perceptions of corruption. What a mess. Uh, Finland's Nordic neighbors earned uh, reliably high scores. Denmark, number two. Iceland, number three. Sweden, number four. In the top five. They have a lot of tall people, too, I notice, and white. And Norway, number seven, comfortably ranking in the top ten. Israel is, was number five, even with the war in, against Hamas. They get a three-year average. And Palestine was number 103, meaning they're not even in the top 100. What a mess. U.S. and Canada. People under 30, very unhappy. People over 60, pretty happy. Under people under 30, U.S. ranked number 62, while those for 60 and older in America was number 10. Canada was number 58 among the so-called young, and number 8 for those 60 and older. So it's getting worse for the youngins. Australia, New, Australia and New Zealand, also in the Anglosphere, also saw much lower rankings among the so-called young. What a mess, huh? Uh, white cops under attack. This injustice department will hold accountable. Officers who violate constitutional rights and in so doing betray the public trust. That's an attorney general Merrick Garland stated after two white former Mississippi law enforcement officers, member of the goon squad, the self-proclaimed goon squad, were sentenced by a federal judge, federal judge on Tuesday to prison after admitting to torturing and abusing two black men last year. Four other white ex-officers pleaded guilty to the, ex to the abuse, and they will be sentenced later this week. What a mess, huh? Um, they say that strawberries are dirty unless you get them organic. I don't know. Maybe you could wash them. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP, Hour 3. <laughs> i 
uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the third hour of the show today. There is one line open, now two lines open if you want to jump in there at 888-775-3773. 888-77-JESSE. J-E-S-S-E. Jesse, my biblical question for this week, the biblical question, do you have morals and values? If so, where do you find them? Do you have morals and values? If so, where do you find them? Amazing question. We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're out and about and you know you can pause that, catch the show, you can be listening live on your iPhone or iPad. If you're too busy to watch it now, you can podcast. But you can be listening live at 641 7931500641793150 and follow us on social media JLP Talk on X and Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram subscribe and follow the JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram Hurry, hurry, hurry. Do it now. Rush. Like, follow, ring the bell, subscribe. And to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk or rebuildingtheman.com. Rebuildingtheman.com. It's Wednesday. It's the last hour of the show on Wednesday, and every Wednesday is Manhood Hour. What is a man? What is a man? man. It's an adult man. human male. Manhood. Hillary or President Trump? I voted for Hillary Clinton. Uh, beta. Beta male. A man is a male who turned to man. Alpha male. Live right, be right, and lead the way. Take a deep breath. <sighs> How will God warn you when an evil woman is in your life? My baby said nobody did be crying. I don't care. I told you, stop playing with me. This motherfucker cut my baby hair out of here. Oh, you going with your mama tonight, so <laughs> quit crying. I was the only one making me so mad. You don't hurt the dad. You hurt my You hurt my baby. I I made my her for two hours. I do my own girl She's love. your mother, K3. <laughs> yes, I love her, but he makes me mad This is the type of behavior <laughs> that I'm talking about. Power. Girl power. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. It starts in the home, and the hell come through the woman. The hell come through the woman, not through the man. And the men that have hell, a house hell in them is that of the woman. They have not overcome their mothers. And look at that little boy, that kid, little girl crying, hating the mother at this point, frustrated. With, even the little boy like, yeah, I love her, but I just can't handle her, whatever you were saying. She just made me so mad. And making him mad, she has recreated him in her image from good to evil. From good to evil. And the poor father, he can't do anything about it. He can if he knew how, but he doesn't know how. Neither one of those fathers. They're looking at their, in one case, daughter, in the other case, son, being pulled down into hell. And the woman was just fine about it. They love it. Another soul destroyed. If you don't understand the depths of evil, and how much evil hates you. Look at what they're doing to the ch- 
evil is doing to the children through the woman. I don't care what you say. You can bank on this. You can take this to the bank. Mothers hate their children, all mothers. And it's not them, but it's the hatred of the mother's heart. They hate the man's children because evil hate men. Evil hate women, too. It just already control them, but it hate them. Hate them to a core. And it allows them to have no peace. No peace at all. Y'all don't understand, and I didn't either until I just started working on me. Keep my eyes on myself to understand. And the more and the more I realized, the more I realized what I did not know. And I did not know the depths of evil. When Christ said, trust no man, God said, trust no human being. And that the heart of human beings are evil. And then Satan come along and tell the folk, oh, human beings are naturally good. They, they just have a problem, right? Uh-uh. Ain't no such thing as a human being. There's not one. No such thing as a good human being. No such thing as a good father or mother or brother or sister or uncle or aunt or granddad or grandma or so-called friend or co-worker or marriage. And no, there's nothing good about it, Period. And you're lying to yourself if you believe it about yourself and others. Human hearts are wicked. That's why you must be born again. What you see the government doing to America right now with the illegals and attacking and lying to you, you're doing the same thing in your life. Ain't nothing different. And you're driven by the same spirit, spirit of evil. Satan control you, and you don't realize the depths of the control. The depths of control is evil. It's not natural to want for a mother to want to destroy the man's children. It's not natural for men to be afraid to correct the children's mothers. It's not natural to have fear or anger. It's not natural to want to get revenge against your fellow person. I mean, not fellow person, man or woman. It's not natural to want to get revenge. It's not natural to gossip and be jealous and envy and strife and call yourself different names and a different identity. That's abnormal. That's hell in you on earth. In you on earth. You can overcome it if you want, but you can stay right in your hell. God going to leave you there. Jesus is going to leave you there. And then you blame them. And then your little angels that have been put and kept it about around you will leave you in hell. They'll warn you along the way. But if you don't listen to the warning sign because you want what you want, you want your hell. They'll just leave you there. They ain't going to feel sorry for you. They're not going to try to convince you or any of that. Oh, okay, stay in hell. Let me go to Amman. Uh, out of India. Aman, thank for holding. Go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to share two things with you. So, like, uh, two months ago, I finally heard God's voice. One time only. Just one time. And since then, the attack on me has, like, doubled and tripled. And since then, I have not heard His voice. And today, I was... Um, when the show was just about to go live, I was about to do the silent prayer, and all of a sudden, this fear in me crept up. I don't know from where or how, 
it just all of a sudden came inside of me and I started crying and I started saying, oh, I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to be able to be with God. God has abandoned me. And I was, and I started crying and then I was like, this is not me. This is not me. This is not me. I just kept repeating myself. And then I finally, like five minutes later, calmed down. And then I start to do the silent prayer. And then I'm finally now I'm calm. And I was like, I didn't know I had this in me, this fear. And I was wondering, where did this come from? It came from your imagination and emotions. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I, I was not thinking at that time. You were thinking, you were not aware that you were thinking. Oh. You just were not aware of it. I fall for the lie then. I yeah, think. absolutely. You unconscious. That's why you have to practice all the time being present. Practice little ways of being present. When you get up in the morning, take a moment and look around your room. Don't just jump up running trying to make a schedule, right? Get up and just take a moment, look around, be aware of yourself, getting out of bed, to, and then being aware of yourself, walking around the room. And and you're going to go in and out for a while because you're so used to, accustomed to living unconsciously. When you say you heard the voice of God, what did his voice sound like? You say you've heard it before. Just one time, it was like in winter. It was like um, I went outside. I, w- I wanted to buy my father, like my earthly father, a scarf, so like a winter scarf. And I was searching. I went to like 10, 11 shops around my house, and I never, I could not find it. And I was like, where should I go? Where should I go now? And my mind was telling me I should go to another state, like travel six hours or something. And I was like, that just... And what did God's, what did God's voice sound like? I, I don't know how to describe it, but it was words, but at the same time, it was not words, and it was so clear, like, there was no doubt about it. Like, all of a sudden, I blanked out, but I did not blank out, and it was just clear, like, there was no doubt about it, and I did, it was just two words, two words and I went to that place, in 10 seconds, I found it, and I was like, wow, that was, like, so natural. Well, practice being aware, meaning in a little way that you grow into consciousness if you practice a little thing, getting in and out of your car or or walking down the road or making a meal, come back to uh, practice being aware and it'll become easy. That way you start catching those thoughts. You just catch them, catch them, and once you catch them, they cannot affect you. Amon, thank you so much, man. Call me again. I appreciate it. I got to take a break. Back in a moment. D Live on Treasure Chest is now open. I'm two years old now, and I've been, <gasps> I've been clinically depressed since I was 17 years old. And ever since I started listening to you a couple of months ago, bro, I don't even need to hear the word depression. I don't even care about that because that's not anything that I identify with anymore. Nice. I'm 100% cured. I'm 100% better because I've been listening to the Jesse Lee Peterson show and I can't even begin to tell you how much I appreciate you and I just can't even you know begin to tell you how much I really appreciate the things that you're doing for young men young men need to hear this and young men need to know this message that you're delivering because it's important it's vital to their lives Jesse I just wanted to let you know that man. that's amazing I mean you made my day man when I hear one soul has returned to the Father, it's like a thousand. It's better than silver and gold. So God bless you, man. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back, Carter. Welcome back. 
A um, couple of quick announcements. Number one, the Hake report is coming up at the top of this hour. The Hake, H A K E report, dot com. The Hake report from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time, Monday through Friday. James Hake is on fire. And at 11, from 11 to 12, Joel Friday TV. Joel Friday TV at 11 a.m. Pacific time. He black right after the hate report. And then right after Joel Friday TV, the American anchor baby, a genius. Energy given to him by God and a plane, airplane pilot. At 12 noon Pacific time. And ladies, tomorrow night, Thursday, if the Lord is willing, and the creek don't rise, um, the women's form, every third Thursday night of the month, ladies form. So come on down, ladies. We're having a, we started out this year with the women's form on fire. And then the first Thursday night for men only, they're on fire as well. We're not playing around with the devil this year. We're just not going to play with him. The devil hate us. All human beings, he wants to destroy you. He made a promise. He was going to rob, steal, and kill. And he ain't playing. There, there's no love in anger. Anyone that has anger, all in the name of Jesus or not, anyone who has anger is pure evil. To the depths of their bones, their core. And so... The men's forms are amazing as well. And then Sunday morning for everybody and their mama, brand new episode of The Fallen State this week on Friday. A very mama mia, unexpected conversation with uh, Fatima. And some Gilliam. She is a racial ethicist. Es <laughs> what the... Attorney and author of Race Rules. What your black friend won't tell you. Watch this. Next time on The Fallen State. Are you black or white? I am black. Did y'all have a white mailman? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should put a sign on that says, I'm black. Jesse, I think out the gates, it's clear that you and I have completely divergent political views on things. But Could the black person be racist as well? No, because I don't believe that black people can be racist. What's wrong with you? The great white hope. What do you think? I think that those look like they are perfect as dog chew toys. What a mess. <laughs> it, it, it is... Uh, it, it, it was an amazing discussion. Support the Father State right there. Re, uh, Thefatherstate.tv slash donate and rebuild oh, uh, or locals.com. All right? Locals.com. Amazing. Let me go back to the busy phones here. 888-775-3773. Rick out of Hampton, Virginia. Rick, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Jesse, man, I tell you, man. Good morning to you, man. Hey, Rick. I guess when is white people gonna start fighting these blacks back? You remember last week you showed one black girl beating two elderly white women, and now you see a high school black kid beating on another white kid. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I believe these white kids that go to these black schools, their parents are liberal, and they don't want to be called racist, so they tend to, you know, prove that they're not racist by sending their kids there. You know, and, and it, to me, it is outrageous, man. I mean, white folks have a right to defend themselves. They really do. It, it's, uh, it, it's interesting that the white people won't speak up. The white people's at a point, uh, the white people are at a point that they won't, they, they'll send their children into the hands of the blacks to be beat up and, and just beat up, beat to, cool. And the, and if you notice, 
I don't know if the white kids are afraid to fight back, protect themselves, or they just, they know that if one black jump on them, there's going to be two or three or a gang. So they, they are like hoping maybe one would just be enough beat down. But I just, right. I don't know. Well, I, I mean, it's crazy to me. Let's say the whites are afraid to say there's no such thing as racism. I'm not against you. Um, uh-huh. I'm not your problem. You're your own problem. But at least look like it, it, it seems that they would quietly protect their children away from the blacks uh, being yeah. beat up like that. But I, I, I don't know. The, the fear just allows them not to even love their own children. I guess. Wow. Because I tell you, man. Ain't no way in hell I'll like, send my kid to. And I'm black. I wouldn't even send my black child to a black school. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> hey, I'm from Gary, Indiana. Were you talking Gary, Indiana? You I from Gary? Born and raised in Gary. Oh, yes, sir. All day long. What's, what, what, what street? I grew up on 9th Avenue. No. 2577 West 9th Avenue. Yes, sir. Did you, uh, which high school you went to? I went to Westside. I think that was the last high school they built. And to my understanding... You went to Westside High School? Yes, sir. Yeah, Westside because... 1988. Wow. I thought you were older than that. No, man. I'd be, I'd be double nickels September 14th. <laughs> You'd be a double... N- N-word, you said? Oh, that's 55. Double, double oh. nickels. That stands for 55. Oh, I thought you said double N-word. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you a myth. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, but anyway, and so they yeah. built uh, West Side High, and they yeah. turned Edison and Roosevelt and all those other schools into junior high, junior, junior high school. Jesse, to my understanding, there's only one high school in Gary, and that's West Side. And and I Roosevelt remember when they first down. I remember when they first built West Side High, and we went yeah. over there to look at it to. Take a look. It was beautiful and clean yeah. and brand new beautiful. and real big, real big and nice. Yeah, it's a, it was the largest high school in the state of Indiana. So they built, um, I think, a high school in East Chicago. Then that was the largest. And now West Side High look like? Look like a dump. A dump. Look, they but, just, um, the blacks went in there and literally destroyed West Side High. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> that was so crazy what? to see that. You remember Gary was an economic empire? Yeah. I mean, ro- rolling nice. And then once Hatcher came in there, you had you had more boarded up buildings. Yeah. People dumping trash all in the alleys and stuff. And I don't even think um Gary has a Walmart in it. You remember Richard Hatcher? Yeah, I remember Richard Hatcher. Wow. I mean, we we almost man, like homeboys. Yes, yeah, sir. I remember Richard Hatcher after that. After Richard Hatcher came, um, Mayor Barnes, and he um he he stayed there as long as he could stay in there without doing nothing. <laughs> Gary, Indiana, got to a point, and it may still be that way, where it's controlled by all, I think, black women, but women for sure, and it's just getting worse. I think the only man that they had running anything was the head of the fire department. I believe. I may be wrong, about it, but it's it's over for Gary. It's so bad now. Uh, Hassan Dahl is afraid to walk down the street. <laughs> Hassan, Hassan Dahl is afraid to look out the window. I keep asking this question. Maybe you can give me a definition on this, man. Out of all the nation, all I mean, all nations ran by, I guess they call people of color. Why the economy is not thriving? I mean, only per, only place the economy is thriving seems like to be Europe. Or either Australia or either the U.S. and Canada. You and said, re- repeat your question. No, I'm saying, how come um, countries that are led by blacks don't have strong economies? I mean, do they, are they, are they, the blacks are cursed. Government? <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to believe you, man, because. How come you, you don't, you don't see, you don't see for, look, yeah, I look at the same Haiti. thing. Yeah, I said the same thing. I said, why is every country that are ran by people of color, their economy sucks, the only industry they have is tourism? The family life sucks. The prison life sucks. The uh, getting along with other races doesn't work at all with them. The blacks are cursed. 
It seems like we are. It seems like the blacks are experiencing the curses of Deuteronomy 28. When you look at all those curses, that's exactly what blacks are going. Through. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. I mean, when you look at the curses of Deuteronomy 28, and look at each of those curses. That's what the blacks are going through. And, and yeah, all over the world, the blacks are cursed. Let me ask. I be- so, yeah. So you know about East Chicago, Indiana, too? Yes, sir. I'm very. I'm familiar with East Chicago. That's Gary. East Chicago, Hammond are all in the same county. Oh, do you do you know about the Kagamet? The Kagamet no, is don't. right between Gary and East Chicago, right in like Alexander Avenue, Melville, and that's where the blacks live. Merrillville, great, definitely familiar with Merrillville. Matter of fact, that's where most of the um, blacks moved at after Gary was so tore up, and then he moved to Merrillville, and now they're on the way to. Had <laughs> the blacks are cursed, man. It's it's a sad way to live, but I do understand that. I understand it, man. It, 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 and it just amazes me, man. Even picking politicians, but they, they always pick people because of their color. Look at the lady in um Bowdoin County. Then now this lady trying to tell her tell people that Jesus told her to prosecute Trump, and the man never did nothing. When all else fell, blame it on Jesus. Yep, that's what she's blaming it on now. She said, Jesus told her to prosecute President Trump. And the whole <laughs> thing President Trump was asking, look. When did she say that? that? Where did you get that from? I haven't I think, heard that. I, that's today. I, I seen it on a news flash today. From, oh, from, um, from so Black you, and White Network. Really? What a mess. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a mess, Rick. I thank you, yeah. man. I appreciate you. Hey, love you guys. Keep up the good work, dude. Everybody in the moment, listen to Jesse Lee Peterson's show for knowledge today, brother. Amazing. Thank you. All the way from Gary, Indiana. Take care, buddy. Yes, sir. Okay. That's amazing, Rick. I never knew that. I heard him say that the other day on somebody, either Hake, maybe Nick, or even Joe Elsa. I'm like, I didn't know you're from Gary, Indiana. But he's right. Some of you don't know it. At one point, they built a brand new high school in Gary, Indiana, West Side High. And it was the same year I was leaving uh, uh, Edison High. And they were turning all those high schools into junior high. And so we went and visit as they were building the school. And it was brand new. It looked like a white school. It was brand new, track and field. And I love track and field. And everything you needed in that school. And all the kids from the high school, Roosevelt, and Edison, and all the other high schools were going to go there. And now I went back and visit. You can tell there must not have been one white person going there. It's it's a, it's a dump. It is absolutely a dump. It's a dump. 888-775-3773. 888-775-3773. Glenn is a first time caller out of Wisconsin. Glenn, welcome to the show. You're on the air. How you doing, Jesse? All is well. All is well here too. Uh, I just want to. I, I just want to say I, I love your message. Um, and I just was wondering. I play poker. Uh, I think it's the greatest game in the world. I was just wondering your views on on that. I, you always say, don't want anything, don't look for anything. How do you feel about that? About you playing poker? Yes. Is it like your job or something? No. No, I it's, mean, it's you my did... pastime. I spent, oh, you... the last, I, I spent the last eight months basically getting away from the world right. and sitting in front of my computer watching you playing poker on the computer. You know? Well, as long as you can take it or leave it. Let's say you need to walk away from it. Oh, if, I walked away from if it. If you could walk yes. away from it without being uh, uh, emotionally bothered by it or in your mind or emotionally, you're fine. As long okay. as you don't get a sense of identity from it. Okay. Explain more about never wanting anything. I mean, explain that a little, little bit. Um, and my producer made a good point. He said that it's not the money from the poker you want. It's the thrill. As long as you're not getting the thrill, exactly. he's right. I, I could play for M&M's. I don't have to play for money. I could play for M&M's if you're, you're cookies, you know, right on. or something like that, you know. Okay. It's, it's not the point of the money. It's just the, 
just it's it's a game of decisions. Everything, and you're in the now when you're playing the game. You're in the now all the time. You have to be, otherwise you can't play. Oh, okay, amazing. So, uh, and you you ask, could I explain not wanting? Yes. Not wanting meaning that in your mind and body it makes you think that you want. If one situation doesn't work out, I hear a lot of people say that. I hear a lot of people say that, well, I tried this and it didn't work, so I I, I want a family. And they're thinking that if they got a family, that things would be better for them. If they got married and had children, things would be better. Or if that doesn't work, they think, well, I need a a bigger house. Mm -hmm. Or I need this or I need that. All that is an illusion that comes from the imagination. But if you were not into your thoughts and emotions and you were just always present, Mm -hmm. you would never want for anything because in the present, instead of being lost in an illusion of a past or future, in the present, everything you, you don't even think about what you want because nothing is missing. Right, right, right. That's the way I've kind of lived my entire life. Nice. I, I feel. Nice. Yeah, just, go- just stay present and not in thoughts. The thought yeah. makes you think you want what you want, and it just is, I mean, it makes you think you want what you really don't, and it's a setup. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I can, you know, as far as women, you know, I was married for 38 years, um, and she was the devil. Yeah, I guarantee it. Uh, we didn't have kids. We was it was based on you know eight, got married at eighteen years old. It was based on what I considered love. You know we, what we all consider love, but it's really not love. It was sex. It was never love. It, yeah, I, I can agree with that. I, I really, you fell really in can sex. Agree with that. You didn't fall in love. No such exactly. thing as falling in love. Exactly. I, I realize that now. I'm divorced now, and the craziest thing was I always kept her grounded. I, she, her mother was. The devil. Yeah. I mean, she was the devil. I, you know, and COVID came along, and I, she asked me, "Can I go take care of my parents?" Her, her, her father was ill. Her mother was had dementia, Alzheimer's. And I said, "Okay, go, go take care of your mother. I'm going to go take care of my father." And um, I'm sorry, I get emotional. Um, I'm sorry. See, this is the part I can't fight. It's the emotion part of it. I'm still fighting it. I know, I know it's evil. I get so emotional, yeah. baby. It's amazing. I'm 50 year, 58 years old. Every I just time can't, I can't break this, I think this, of you. this barrier of when I talk about things. I get I, so I, I cry. emotional. I, get, I, get I, I cried get over <laughs> you. What a fool there I've you been. Turn my, turn my, turn my crying now into a laugh. Now your that's time to way. cry I love you, over I love me. The way you do things. But anyways. What I, are you crying about? The, the loss, I guess. Of what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know not exactly. You, That's, you're crying over the loss of hell? Yeah, I guess, yes. <laughs> For some reason, yes. There you go. That's why I love you so much, Jesse. But, um, yeah, and after a year of her living with her parents, she just, I couldn't control her anymore. She became, she, it seemed like she was becoming an alcoholic. She was taking pills that I didn't know about. And every time I would see her, she was just different. It was like a switch. And all of a sudden, she called me one day, and she said, I'm bored, and I don't have feelings with you anymore. And she took off. And did I, you have children with her? No, we never had okay. children. God, thank God we never had children. And so I, think she, I think she, that was the God's way of telling, you know, she, the God knew that this yeah. woman should not have children. And so when she said that, you should have said, thank you, God. <laughs> Yeah, I did. Actually, I did. I think I always thought it was for the best. Yeah. You know, the emotions part of me, it's, it's been a fight all my life. It's just like I get emotional 
seeing somebody win a prize or, you know, on TV, they, they won something. It's like a pride, you know, I just Have feel that Have you forgiven pride your mother? mother? Yes. Oh, okay. I my, well, here's my mother what I my father. My father passed, my mother passed away on my 14th birthday. I had, I had resentment most of my life. I knew it wasn't her fault. You know, we had, we had a beautiful life then 14 years. All right. And uh, there you go crying again. Now you cry to old mama. Yeah, that's something. <laughs> How old is you? Huh? If you can huh, you can hear. How yeah. old are you? I'm 58. Stop crying over mama, man. I know. I know. I know, Justin. Here's I, what I, I recommend. I, 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 yeah, I recommend. How do I get rid of that? Watch those thoughts and that, let them pass. It's, it's, like a, it's like a trigger. I mean, yeah. you, can be, you can trigger me so fast. What a beta. No, I'm not a beta. I, I, <laughs> it's the only if, if I'm a beta, that's the only reason I would be. Yeah, because because of that. But otherwise, I am true blue alpha to the to the core. <laughs> I always have been. I always have been. So here, oh. the next time you think about mama, or those thoughts about this woman that you better be glad is gone, watch the thought and just yep. let it pass. Don't go with it. Yeah, your 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 silent prayers help that a lot. Yeah. Really and, and, and when you're going through those feelings, don't reach out for anything to make you feel better. The poker or anything, wait till the pass and then play poker. Don't play poker while you're feeling that way because exactly. it'll, it'll save you from overcoming. Exactly. I, I feel the same way. Yeah. I, I'll be honest with you, I'm playing poker right now. See there? <laughs> and crying over mama. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, hey, you know, but I can laugh at the same time. That's, that's, that's why right. I'm, you know, that's why I know the trigger is just the trigger. And, yeah. And I know my feelings. So, you know. Glenn, call me again, buddy. I got to run. I'm looking at the time here. All right, Jesse. I love you. Thank you. You too, buddy. Love you back. All right. Take Bye now. 888-773-773. Super Jack. Super Jack. See on C bought a coffee. Hey, wash the strawberries with vinegar before eating. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds effective. What the? Jesse, Thank you. Don Lemonhead is evil, but Elon Musk is no angel himself. Some I of gotta the... find me an angel to fly away with me. I gotta find me an angel. It's a nice song. You uh, heard that before? Yeah, of course. Nice. Uh, some of the questions he asked Elon are valid, like about his drug addiction. It just goes to show no matter how much money a person have, it doesn't make mean they have inner peace. What the? Thank you. I appreciate it. Joey bought a coffee. Hey, Jesse, please make a shirt that's t t-shirt that says, stick with it, stick with it, stick with it. Thanks. Smiley face, heart hands emoji. Nice. We're, we're working on it as we speak. Yeah, that was a suggestion from the yeah. Fallen State producer. Yeah, absolutely. Working on it, indeed. J Donnie Girls Amazing. Idea says... Dawn says, this stress has got to leave me. A rumble rant. I have a great attitude, but the stress levels aren't easing up. Is it okay to pray for Jesus to take this away? No. It's okay to watch those thoughts and know that it's coming from you being in darkness. Let the thought pass and let the anger go. You'll be fine. God has already taken care of all that. Amazing. Thank you. WD41 gave a ninja guinea saying, stick with it. If you want to say to Jesus, go ahead, but whatever. Okay. Thank you for the Ninja Gini WD-41, and yeah. shout out to the top yeah, contributors, including WD-41, Evgeny Crosby, Aries One. I have books that are amazing. Misty, 555-555-565, and the rest of the supporters over on DLive, and the Rumble crew. Thank Adios. you. Adios. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Let me go to Alex. He's been waiting a long time out of... Uh, uh, Tennessee Alex, real fast. Hey, Jesse. Hey. Um, so, biblical question. Do you have morals and values? If so, where did you find them? I don't think I have morals and values, uh, but I do have a moral compass. And it seems to me that if you don't get your morals, or that moral compass doesn't come from God, it, it doesn't it doesn't make a difference because it's just whoever you whoever you fear determines your morals and your values. Amazing. I appreciate that. I put my little two cents in on Sunday. I cannot respond until then. But thank you for that, Alex. 
All right. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. All right. Brandon, real fast from Canada. Uh, I don't. Can you hear me? Brandon. Brandon, call me tomorrow. We're out of time and your phone is not clear. Okay, I'll call you back tomorrow. Thank you. Amazing. I am out of time. The Hate Report is coming up now. Joel Friday after the Hate Report and the American Anchor Babe after Joel Friday. Thank you all for everything. Get on that path and stay there if not living your hell and suffer and die. Bye. Amazing. Amazing. So here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer, and I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it, and then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Other than sex, I wonder why would a man even need a woman today? Women don't know how to cook. They don't know how to clean. They're in competition with men. They don't want to be wives and mothers. Some want to get married, but they don't want to live in that proper position of life. Because the only purpose of marriage is to have a family. And that's been known forever. And so if you don't want to have children, there is no need to get married. And so I was wondering... Why would a man even get married today? I never thought I'd see the day when women would be come out of her natural role and be like a man, even though she hate that role. When she was with a man that's weak, she hate him. But if he try to be strong, she'd stop it. I never imagined that. You're seeing good destroyed and abnormal is presented as normal. Mm-hmm.